Yes, he is leading off. Good to be back here with Gary Seegers of the Winning Cures Everything podcast. As I, I don't believe that we have gotten the chance to chat it up here since the Super Bowl has been set uh, because you guys have been busy getting some things done. Kind of had a week off last week with no uh, NFL game. We've got the college basketball going on. And finally, the 49ers and the Chiefs are getting here. So you're getting us rolling on Three Dog Thursday. Now, I should make mention for our audience on the podcast on Three Dog Thursday that you can also see this interview on the Winning Cures Everything YouTube channel where that male model Gary Seegers, you can see him. <laughs> However, Gary Seegers, they cannot see me, and that's probably good because I, I'm – I need to be uh, heard but not seen right now. They can see my picture, and then they can imagine. Bug. You're all okay. Good. My right smile there. is good. I I am I am good. So they see moving Gary Seekers. They don't see moving. They just hear TJ uh, on the Winning Cures Everything YouTube channel. You're hearing it as is uh, here on the Three Dog Thursday podcast. I love the technology on how we're making all of this uh, work. How are you, my friend? Are you, are you like me? You are anxious to get Super Bowl L I. V out there, Super Bowl 54. Let's go. Let's go for Sunday. I got to tell you, I was, it, it, once we got up to the AFC and the NFC championship games, I was just about done with football. I was exhausted. I, I spend so much time looking at numbers, listening to information, you know, coming up with all these different things. And it takes up so much of my time. And I've gotten even more into college basketball. Every day I run my numbers. I see what I like, what I don't like, uh, which, by the way, over at the website, winningcureseverything.com, my daily picks are up there all the time. You can get it on my Twitter as well, at GaryWCE, uh, hitting nearly 58% so far on the year. And, uh, and as we Good. speak, I just watched Southern Illinois win at home against Loyola Chicago as a four-point dog. Had that one today. <laughs> so I'm 3-0 uh, I'm and o on the evening. I've got two that don't look like they're going to hit, but... Uh, but I did have Nevada plus four at Colorado State, and that one's looking pretty good so far. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I, I should be a four and two evening, I think. But uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's. I was exhausted. I was tired. I was ready for football, uh, football to be over. And now I'm amped back up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready for XFL next week. I mean, I'm ready for all kinds of stuff. So I've I've actually started doing a little preview for uh, for the XFL that we'll get into next week. I love I love all of it, and uh, and obviously there's a Tampa XFL team. You're in the uh, the Greater Memphis area in the Mid South. They had a team a year ago in the Alliance of American Football, which did eight of its ten regular season games, and then ran out of money and went kaput. Yep. I think McMahon's league may play the whole year, so that'll be interesting to see how it uh, how it plays out with the TV ratings and the major markets and the NFL stadiums and all of that. He so, says that he's got the money invested already for three full seasons. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll shoot, see. hey, shoot for one. He did one back in two thousand one. Let's see if he gets beyond the first season uh, <laughs> on this go around with the money and all the stuff with McMahon's uh, XFL. All right, so that's a conversation for future Three Dog Thursdays. Forty ers and Chiefs. Give me a little bit on the matchup here, and for Three Dog Thursday purposes, right now. Uh, we're headed into Thursday with Kansas City still as the favorite in this one. So give me give me a couple of thoughts on this uh, on this Super Bowl here. Well, this this line has it opened as a pick'em out in Vegas and was quickly bet to Kansas City minus one minus one and a half. And as of today, I've been able to find books that have it at two and a half, which is just kind of crazy to me. Uh, big thing that we talked about on our show on our preview this week was uh, DVOA, so defensive value over average, right? So it, a big thing about that, uh, in Super Bowls, for whatever reason, I guess because there is the bye week for both teams before the game, you have a lot of time to figure out the other team's offense. Now, both of these coaches are offensive coaches. You would think that that would actually help the offenses, uh, but it hasn't in the past. So the last four Super Bowls, the team that has the better DVOA has actually won. Out of the last 17, uh, the better defensive DVOA has gone 11 and 6. Now, some of these have been mm. really close. Some of them haven't. Uh, just to give you an idea of which way I'm leaning on this, San Francisco has the number two defensive DVOA in the league. Kansas City is number 14. 
So, you know, you can look at all the different stats. You can look at yards per point. You can look at, um, you know, yards per play. You it, Whatever you want to look at. Uh, San Francisco has a real, real advantage in this game from an overall team standpoint. Uh, they do not have the better signal caller. But I don't think that we've seen everything that they are going to do with Jimmy Garoppolo in this game. I don't think that they've lost, you know, any kind of confidence in him at all. I don't think they've had to use him for the last two weeks, uh, the last two playoff games. Right. They, they haven't needed to use him whatsoever. They have ran over the Vikings and ran over the Packers like it was nothing. Uh, I don't know that they'll be able to do the exact same thing against Kansas City. Kansas City's actually done a really good job of being able to stop the run or at least slow down teams. Um, but a, a lot of that has to do with when you get up on a team, they have to go away from their bread and butter. Well, I think if you take San Francisco away from running the football, they're still going to be able to score points. So, you know, I, I, I'd love to see the matchup. i love to see uh, the coaches going against each other. Kyle Shanahan and Andy Reid are fantastic offensive coaches. Uh, you're going to see some crazy stuff in this game. If if there are props uh, for trick plays and fake punts and whatnot, like I, I would look for something <laughs> like that because you know that these guys are going to do something to try and gain an advantage. Yeah, no doubt about that. As you listen on here to Gary Seeger's Winning Cures Everything podcast, I know that later on in the show we're going to talk with Brian Edwards from MajorWager.com about some of these cross-sport uh, the proposition bets. You're not big. You told me this before we officially began the interview. You're not big on any of the prop bets, really, uh, for this one. It, it doesn't entice you on uh, the number of uh, of receiving yards uh, for Tyreek Hill or a uh, number of sacks for Nick <laughs> Bosa. And none, none of that. None of that really appeals, at least for your taste in this Super Bowl. At least for my taste, uh, because I could see this game going any number of different directions. And, you know, there's some, there's some games where props make a whole lot of sense. But these have been driven into the ground. Uh, people have, you know, in a regular season game or even in a regular playoff game, you're not going to get as much action on it. So the numbers, you may be able to find an edge somewhere. I don't know that you can do that in this situation because so many people are so invested in it and so many people have done so much work towards it uh, that the numbers really should be right right around exactly where they should be. Uh, I did like Raheem Mostert. Um, I liked under on his rushing yards because I think that uh, I think the carries are going to get divvied up a little more. I think you're going to see more from Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, so I was able to get it at under 86 and a half rushing yards. But I've seen other books that have it, you know, in the mid-70s. I have, you know, it, I don't know where wow. it lands. So other people's books uh, are going to be all over the place on some of these props. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of staying away from it. Uh, I think Chris and I on Friday are going to kind of go over some of the props and, and just pick out fun ones, you know, heads or tails. And, uh, you know, I was listening to a podcast called Bet the Process, and that's Jeff Ma and Rufus Peabody. I don't know if you listen to them, but they are analytics guys, and they are fantastic. Um, and one of the big things that they were looking at was, uh, will the opening kickoff be a... Uh, touchdown or not, and which even at the odds of like, you know, minus 250 for no, it's still a good bet based on uh, where Hardman is and, and how far the San Francisco kicker kicks it and all that kind of stuff. But you don't know who's going to kick off, right? So it's still a good bet to bet no. <laughs> Um, so you, you well, have, and we and by the way, we have had a Super Bowl open with a kickoff return for a touchdown. That was Devin Hester of the Bears. In this stadium, in Miami, in Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, quick story on that one. Yeah. Uh, you'll love this, Gary Seegers, as, as we talk about the, and I'll circle back to your analytics and the actual prop bet on the kickoff return. Um, uh, so I got a, an opportunity to work with Archie Manning and, and being around um, Archie and hear different stories. And so um, he told the story about that night in Miami where Peyton Manning's playing in his first Super Bowl and Archie is in the suite with the family with oldest brother Cooper, with Eli, who's the quarterback of the Giants, uh, with their wives, uh, and with Olivia, his, uh, his wife, Peyton Manning's mom, and the name escapes me on Peyton's uh, uh, wife, but she's in the Amy. suite as well. 
So Archie, hey, Amy, thank yeah. you. All right. So, so Archie has a team meeting with all, with all the family members. And he says, listen, this is a, this is a neat night. It's a neat honor. It's something I never got to do. And, and we don't know when this is ever going to happen again for Peyton. We hope it happens a bunch. We hope it happens for Eli a bunch, but whatever happens, Let's, let's don't be miserable. Let's be happy. And the other thing you need to be aware of is the TV cameras are probably going to be on us constantly. And if something goes wrong, I don't want us on worldwide TV from the Super Bowl looking down and out or mad or gesturing. I want us to be positive. I want us to be happy. That's what he says. So that's his, that's his team meeting a few minutes before the game. So the game kicks off. The Colts kick off, and Devin Hester catches it and goes whatever he went, 95, 97, 100 yards. And Archie says, Olivia, who had been married to me 40 years at this time, Olivia turns to me as Devin Hester is at about the 10-yard line, and she goes, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm miserable, damn it. <laughs> so, so, so that's the way that Super Bowl began uh, uh, there for the uh, the Manning family. But it worked out, yes. It, it worked out. It worked out well in that instance. But back to your analytics, you're saying the opening kickoff return for a touchdown may just be a good value. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of, of how much you're giving up there, it's the odds of them actually returning the opening kickoff for a touchdown are not great. And so that, I mean, that would be a good one. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of other ones that, that you can get into. Will there be an onside kick? Uh, there were only 60, <laughs> there were 62 this year uh, onside kicks out of what is right. it, two, 250 some odd games. Uh, so the odds are eh, probably not. Um, you know, so if, if you want to go where the best EV is, uh, I would go no to the onside kick, and I'd go no to the opening kickoff. Um, but if that's if that's a little too much juice. Then, uh, then I can understand people not wanting to go that route because you're you're going to be giving up, you know, three, four hundred, something like that. So it's it is wow. what it is. Um, well, and and we think we have this stuff figured out, and then we get a Super Bowl like Super Bowl Fifty Three a year ago, where there's no touchdown scored by either team in the first three quarters. So sometimes you can look at the analytics and try to figure this stuff out. Look at the look at the trends, and it doesn't matter. So. We'll, we'll see as they tee up. Real quick, because I want to talk some college basketball before you've got to run and we've got to run uh, as well. What does this game come down to in your mind? If you, if you had to, in a couple of sentences, say this game is decided either by San Francisco or Kansas City doing what, what is it? Uh, it would be decided to me at the line of scrimmage. Uh, can... San Francisco make Patrick Mahomes do things that he doesn't want to do. And, and and that that doesn't include just getting pressure on him because obviously he's really good against pressure. But can you make him do things that he is uncomfortable with? And on the other side of the ball, it's still the trenches. San Francisco has to be able to run the football uh, to be successful. Now, I do still think that Jimmy G is going to get uh, a lot more play in this game. Uh, I think San Francisco wins the ball game. I think they've got the better overall team. Now, if it does get... There's only three outcomes that I see happening. Either San Francisco wins close, Kansas City wins close, or Kansas City blowout. I don't see San Francisco blowing this team out um, because I think Patrick Mahomes is just too good. But if you can keep him on the sideline and you can actually make Kansas City draw out their drives, don't let them score quick, all that, um, which may be kind of tough because San Francisco... They lean on uh, zone secondary coverages. And, you know, they don't have the, the horses, really, to line up man-to-man with these uh, speedy receivers. I, I think that San Francisco is going to be able to run the football basically whenever they want to because they are going to be more balanced. Um, but we'll see. You know, I, I like San Francisco here. I've got money on them. I've got money on the under. Uh, that line or the total opened at uh, 52 and a half. And it is all the way up to 55 at some spots now. Mm. So I am under the 55, and I am San Francisco plus two and a half, but I've got them on the money line at plus 105 right now. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm all over the 49ers here. I think they're the better overall team, and I think they'll get this W. They have had familiarity, different regimes, different players completely with Miami, two previous Super Bowls in Miami. We'll see what 
what matters with that. All right, real quick, a couple of college hoop comments uh, from you. We're going to talk a lot of college basketball, not just on this Three Dog Thursday podcast, but also moving forward, Gary Seegers, you and Chris Giannini on Winning Cures, everything going to talk a lot of college hoops. We do as well. Thank you to the Memphis Tigers for finally <laughs> showing up on a Wednesday night, getting a win in Central Florida in Orlando, not far from where I'm seated, hosting the Three Dog Thursday podcast. So the Tigers have rebounded. Uh, are they are they going to get out of the funk that they are in? I know they have UConn on the weekend on Saturday. Are the Tigers real quick going to get out of the funk? This is my alma mater. This is the blue and the gray. We got to we got to have them get into a stretch run here where they can do some damage in March. They needed some confidence, and tonight got them that. You get a road win regardless of who it's against, and that's always a good thing, right? Uh, they got Boogie Ellis looking more like the recruit that he was supposed to be. Lance Thomas, the uh, the grad transfer, not even grad transfer, just the transfer from Louisville that had to sit out last season. He's a big man, but uh, but he was hitting threes tonight. He uh, he scored a career high twenty points, uh, and the Tigers themselves only scored fifty nine. So they're still not quite out of their offensive funk, but this team can still play defense. They still got more talent than pretty much anybody they're going to play the rest of the year. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think they're out of the funk. They're going to find a way to get into the NCAA tournament, I believe. Uh, but a lot of it has to do with whether or not the coaching staff allows them to build on that confidence. You know, stick with one lineup, make sure that everybody understands what their roles are, and I think they're going to be fine. You know, it, unless Pooh right. doesn't do that, in which case, uh, who knows what's going to happen. But if you keep uh, taking freshmen out of the starting lineup and putting them in and taking them out, and, you know, sometimes they play 25 minutes and sometimes they play eight minutes and what – you know, nobody understands what the role is at that point. And, yeah, you're not going to be able to get very much out of them. So, I, I think they're going to be fine. I think they're going to be okay. They do host UConn coming on Saturday. Interesting in the American Conference, a couple of top 25 matchups. Houston, which won midweek over East Carolina, playing at Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati obviously trying to make a case to make the tournament out of the American Conference. And Wichita State, will they be the road favorite? Likely, yes, at Tulsa. We don't know. The lines won't come out until after we've already put this podcast to bed and you're hearing it on Three Dog Thursday. But Tulsa has already whacked Memphis at home, beaten uh, Houston at home. Let's see what happens in the American Conference. That's an attractive doggy, maybe. Tulsa Golden Hurricane against Wichita State Saturday, Gary. And Tulsa has been playing really, really well, uh, especially at home. They got a big win at UConn on Sunday, uh, but then they got handed to them by Cincinnati. No, 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 not Cincy. They got handed to them by, by somebody uh, last night. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. Um, you know, what what they're going to look like this weekend. But, yeah, Tulsa has been playing uh, above their heads for several weeks now. And, yeah, Wichita State, while they are a good road team, uh, and I do expect them to be favored by, you know, probably four-ish, uh, I, I think that might be a pretty good play. I, I would definitely look at it. All right, we'll find out what Tulsa – can or can't do in that game. Anything else on the college front before you have to run here? I know Syracuse Duke on the weekend will have a lot of eyeballs and a lot of attraction. We were already talking about uh, looking at that game. Anytime it involves Duke, you got to watch out. Oh, yeah. uh, but also top top 25 on Saturday uh, has Michigan State at Wisconsin. Michigan State was an easy winner midweek over Northwestern. Um, what Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.